Good evening and welcome to Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment in Canada, around the world. My name is Tahir Ai Qureshi. I'm a fellow of Rose Institute of Canada and your host. Tonight, we're going to talk about multiple hot topics in real estate. As we are entering into January uh, market, uh, there's a multiple offers are happening. There's a shortage of supply and many issues that people are facing at this moment. Foreign buyers are considering to invest in Canada. First time home buyer have a challenges. Tax season is starting, so people have to worry about the taxes. Sometimes this stress and challenges that we have, we also face family challenges where there are some breakdown in families and you have to know how to deal with the complex property, particularly matrimonial homes and other issues. You also need to learn how to negotiate with buyers and sellers when you are in a multiple offer situation. New construction are going on. As you can see from there, it takes about 24, 36 months before you get a, a completion of a new construction if you book a house, a house or a condominium. There are special protocol and procedure that you have to deal with it how to uh, uh, to uh, um, to close the deal. Also, this during uh, uh, this uh, pandemic, there is a potential of mortgage fraud, and then you, as a real a real estate professional, or also home buyer, uh, buying and selling, uh, securing a mortgage, to make sure your financials are in order for you to buy a property without avoiding any problem with the with the mortgage also you need to learn how to really apply a mortgage what is the process we're going to talk about general many of these things to make sure that you are in compliance as you can see the fin track is bigger issue because when the money is involved and especially you are dealing with cash first time uh, you're depositing more than ten 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 thousand dollar or more than 10,000 as a realtor, or you have to report. There is a FinTrack uh, document requirement and deposit is coming. We have to fill out those forms. Uri has created a form for us that we were using. So let's talk about the topic problem with older homes. As you can see that we have a bidding war going on, multiple offers are happening, and we do not have um, a, a, a ability or chances to get a, a proper inspection done. And if you have an older home, you might have a foundation cracks. You might have an old furnace. You might have a roof that needs to be replaced, especially now in winter. Uh, we have a lot of snow uh, in January. How can you going to verify that if the windows are leaking and 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 you are looking into an older home that may need some structure work. So this is why it's very, very important to hire a good home inspector who will do the, do the uh, inspection for you to make sure that you are making a, a, a right decision. Even though we have a 59% in the last report that I gave for December, and the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board, there were about active listing, minus 59% in December, 2021. So obviously there is a shortage of houses. I hope that federal government that promised so many improvement in our system to create a unified system with the federal government, Ontario government and municipality so they can expedite the approval process so builder can bring more houses. This is very, very important. Now, if the foreign investors, which takes about five to 7% of the transaction in Ontario or across Canada, 
obviously is going to create more or less big problem shortage problem because you're going to have a less and less houses available for local residents and also immigration we're expecting to have at least 400,000 immigrant coming in 2022 as a part of the federal government plan to bring 1 million immigrant in three years. So that means it's going to create further a shortage of housing. And this is why it's very, very important that uh, they, there is a, a collective uh, strategy adopted by the federal, provincial, and municipalities to expedite the process, streamline, and digitize the process so approvals are granted even though because of construction, because of solar house of pandemic, we still have a shortage because of material that we don't have a manufacturing facility up to the 100% capacity. There's a shortage of labor. Therefore, material costs have gone up 30, 35%. You can buy the grocery. Anything you buy have increased. Even the gas prices are creeping up. This is why the cost of new reproduction of new construction home is higher. When you are buying a new property, please make sure you check the future value because builders are not going to give you market value. They're going to give you future value and they're going to take all the appreciation. So when you are jumping into buying a property, make sure you keep in mind that you will be paying a future value to the builders. However, you will be having a lot of foreign buyers also investing in property because as you can see, average price in under in accordance with uh, Toronto Regional Real Estate Board in December 2021, 24.2% from last December to, 20, uh, to December 2021. Therefore, there is no way the price is going to reverse. In fact, it's going to go up as as Korea Canadian Real Estate Association had pro, uh, pro, projected. I believe we have the the report that I'm going to share with you. For Korea report, they are saying the prices in Ontario are expected to increase 11.5 percent in Ontario. So. Even the other, British Columbia is 7.1, Alberta is 4.7, Saskatchewan 5.4, Manitoba 5.9, and Quebec 11%, New Brunswick 11.4%, and New Brunswick was 11.4, Nova Scotia 11.2, Prince Edward Island 8.1, and Newfoundland 4.6. These are projections for 2022 overall. So average price is going to be increased in Canada-wise approximately 7.6%. So this created a big challenge for first-time home buyer. Now an average price, as you mentioned, I mentioned to you in GTA. I'm going to go back and show if 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 home buyers, condo new buyers are buying condominium uh, uh, property. Uh, an average price of 416 is 730,792 dollars in 416. It doesn't say one bedroom or two bedroom or three bedroom. A 905 area is 667,269. So obviously, I expect that the the, the first time mobile will be looking into buying a condominium, one bedroom or two bedroom. And these are average prices put out by. Uh, to our regional real estate board, and you can also check them out uh, based on what you want to buy. You want to check it out in your area to make sure you have the right price uh, and location, and is determined by your realtor in that respective area where you want to buy a property. These are average prices, street by street, location by location zone by zone they will be of different prices so you need to get an estimate of value from your client as you can see because of bidding war majority of these sellers are not listing the price what has recently been sold in order to create a competition they are listing lower i have seen average price is listed 
$150,000 less than the market value that most recently sold. Therefore, some prices, I was looking at a property in Sheridan uh, on Mississauga Road listed for one, uh, 2.1 and sold for 1.8, over $600,000. So why people are listing the low price? Or people are excited, they want to go ahead and buy it because they can see that there's a shortage of supply and this is going to continue. It's not going to change in a short period of time because even new new rules comes into picture, even though they're all collaboration happening with the level of government and contractors are builders are building homes. Still, it's going to be 24 to 36 months time frame before those houses are available for you to buy. Now, as you are thinking about buying a property, if you already bought a property or you're an investor, you are also tax planning because you have now owe money to the taxpayer for the 2021 and you have to start working on your taxes. The sooner you file <coughs> your tax return, the sooner you know how much you qualify because you're going to need tax return, uh, T4A, T4A, notice of assessment. And if you are a T4 employee, you are a T4A or other corporations. So start working on your tax planning. Talk to your accountant to make sure you file your tax return. This is important for, for you to make sure that you are doing it. Now, I have recently helped a community, a, a family that has a problem uh, between the two of them, and they help them to negotiate their assets and, 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 uh, and the cash and money they have. So it's a big issue. It's a family matter. And when you have a dispute within the family, then you have to decide and based on this to make sure you consult with your family lawyer. Normally, you have a matrimonial home that you live together with a wife and a husband. And then you also have investment property. The law says that when you are separating from each other, you have to break even. That means everybody will have to be financially equally to each other at the time of separation. So you have to bring your <coughs> asset on one side and cash inside your TFSA, RSP, other tax saving plans, whatever you have. So you need to be break even. So this is why it's very important to have your lawyer and think about it. This is a bad timing to have a dispute, especially in COVID environment, but you never know family matter does affect people's life. So this is very important that you always consult with a lawyer to find out where you stand. If there is any challenges in your family, I highly recommend to reconcile, to live together, peace and love and respect, because that's the best solution, because we support family system in Canada. So therefore, it's very important. However, things will happen, change. You have to deal with those family matters. So it's important to consult with a lawyer and get some advice. Now. When you are buying and selling, you are really negotiating with a buyer. So, and you are represented by realtors uh, to buy, to help you buy or sell a property. Agreement is between buyer and seller. So therefore, buyer and sellers are negotiating the price of a property. When we talk about real estate, we talk about property that you are buying and selling. So it's very, very important. You're well-educated, well-informed, and you're Realtor has done all comparative market analysis to make sure that you are well aware of it, what is the value of it. Especially lots of people are downsizing from bigger homes to downsizing to make sure you have enough equity in you to buy it because there's going to be a bidding war uh, happening. This is very important for you to make sure that you do that and correct that. So we're going to take a short break. We're going to come back and continue our conversation uh, after, after this. Take a short break. <clears throat> Good evening and welcome to Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment. Now we are talking about different hot topics. So we have talked about problem with the older homes, uh, foreign invest uh, investors in Canada, first-time home buyers, tax planning, family law matters. And when you are negotiating again, <laughs> as a buyer, you are negotiating a deal with a seller or seller dealing with the, with the buyer. 
The agreement is signed between buyer and seller, not between the realtors representing the buyer and the seller. So this is very, very important to have a well-prepared strategy when you are negotiating a deal with with a with a, the a, 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 you know a sale of your house. The agreement of purchase and sale is the real document that is signed between buyer and seller. It has all the terms and conditions, the the price, value, deposit, and all terms and conditions, irrevocability if it's a conditional offer. Right now, majority of these conditions are firm offer now. <coughs> and the pr <coughs> problem with that is that if you have a firm offer, I recently had a situation where a buyer bought a property and they were saying, hey, listen, the appraisal value came less than the what was sold for. And if, if he wanted to see if she can get the discounted price, the seller says, no, that is the challenge you have when you are buying and selling real estate and you are not paying attention to details and trying to make sure that you get the property, but you're not understanding that if the appraised value came lower than what was agreed in the agreement of purchase and sale, then the difference has to be paid by the buyer. Is the buyer prepared it has a contingency plan or not? This is very, very important for, for you guys to do that. So make sure a, a strategic planning is done with your realtors and make sure that all parties, your lawyers, your mortgage agent, inspector, appraiser, everybody is involved as a part of the team to make sure that you are doing a good job. Now, new home construction is a big, there's a lots of people are buying a lot of new homes. And those are based on the current market value <laughs> and builder are charging more money because they're giving you a future value. If you're going to take position after two years or three years down the line, that is the price they're going to be charging you today. And you're going to make commitment. You're going to give a lot of deposit. Remember, if you're giving $200,000 deposit now and you're waiting for three years, who is benefiting for that? Your builder. He's going to use your money for three years. Whereas you can use that money if you are able to buy a property and you hold that property for three years, you can have appreciation for three years on top of the money that you're going to put in. So you're going to be way ahead if you buy from the resale market now than waiting for construction, uh, new construction. Obviously, there are rebate, you're a first time home buyer, or you want to buy a property, a newer one location, you may want to relocate or whatever the choice you have. But be, make sure you consult with a real estate professional in your area because builders are now cooperating. They are compensating a small money to the <laughs> realtors <coughs> who are helping you to buy a property. There's a, there's a lot of things that you have to watch when you're buying a new property. There's a lot of development charges. There are a lot of uh, trees, uh, paving, um, uh, uh, levees, many, many expenses, the meters, everything. Those can accumulate. So make sure when you are buying this, they are put on a ceiling. 7,500 or 10,000 or 15,000, put a ceiling on it. And, and, and the other important thing is sometimes people are buying for investment property or they're buying it for personal use and they end up selling it. There is a HST rebate that you get from the builder. Make sure that you are counting for that money. If you're going to buy and sell, it becomes an investment property. So you should not be claiming the, the input tax credit through the builder. If you're going to buy the property and rent it, you can pay the HST uh, now to the builder and then you reclaim it once you have a signed lease for one year or two. So this is very important for you to make sure that you are watching the details. Also get your agreement re reviewed, get your mortgage pre-approved. Lots of bank banks are working with builders. They're giving you commitment, long-term commitment. You are taking the risk. If the bank doesn't give you more than 120 days and you're closing in five, uh, two, two, three years from today, you can have a challenge. Are you prepared to take the risk? Those are the things you have to check. Also, taking a warranty. 
clauses because there is a possibility the contractor have the right to extend the time because of COVID, very unusual time where your uh, transaction could be delayed for a period of time and you're going to end up staying in a hotel if you already sold your property. So these are the things you have to watch when you are buying and selling real estate, especially when you're buying a new construction. Now, biggest problem we have is the mortgage fraud. We have heard about people are providing the mortgages because they, they pay uh, people under the table sometime and to get a mortgage. This is all mortgage fraud. If you don't qualify, you're not going to get it. You are breaking the law to get a mortgage. It's very, very important to work with a mortgage agent or a banker or a lender to make sure you have all your income documents with you, T4, T4As, and notice of assessment. If you're self, self-employed, you will have a G1, general, and submit all the income, all sources of income to your uh, broker, mortgage agent, or a lender to make sure you are pre-approved before you start the process of buying a property. It's very, very important. It's always good for someone who already have an equity built in, so they are trying to upgrade. If you are downsizing it, that's a totally different story. You also have to watch for your penalty because you might end up paying a little penalty if you are breaking a mortgage unless you are going to uh, to to um, you know uh, carry on or transfer the mortgage very very important i'm going to talk to you because i'm a principal broker of canada express mortgage inc uh, license uh, 13241 uh, i will teach you and guide you how to apply for a mortgage and what steps you have to do you can go to my website, Canada Express-Mortgage.ca. It all information is there. You will can view them. But if you have any question, you can call me directly 416-451-3489. I can help you to make you understand what steps you have to go through to make sure you don't get in trouble and get your mortgage. It's very, very important how to how to apply this is very critical because when you are hiring a mortgage agent or broker who's experienced in explaining you how to apply and what's the props and cons of getting working with a, a broker or going to the lender directly you have to know this the mortgage business is licensed uh, in ontario and everybody has to follow very strict guidelines. Know your product, know your client. This is very important where we look at the product that is suitable for you to make sure that we understand that. Number two, if we also understand our client to make sure how they can afford a mortgage if they are applying for a mortgage. So we're going to take a short break now and we're going to come back to you after the short break. Good evening and welcome to Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment. My name is Tahir Aikreshi. I'm your host. Today we are talking about hot topics in real estate. We are talking multiple things happening in the area. So most important thing right now, the challenge that we have is how to apply for a mortgage. How do we qualify? The most important thing for you is to gather all your income documents, your tax returns, your all sources of income, if you are a self-employed, you need a G1, G1 also, notice of assessment. And you need to, a rental income, your investors. You need to consolidate all your document and submit one time because a lender is looking to see what is your source, source of income when you borrow a money, how you are capable of paying that mortgage on timely manner for a period of time because you're committing for one year, two year, three year, four year, five year fix or variable, whatever agreement that you are doing. So they look at your income statement, the, what is the source of income? So a source of income is through, is a self-employee or is it an employer? And they will look at your T, T4A or a commission agent will have a T4As and T4s. 
and then they will look at the <coughs> notice of assessment and also they look at your history how long you've been an employee of that company so minimum three years history they need for in terms of income purposes so you have an income then you also have an asset which is asset could be your property you have a cash money in the bank or tfsa rsp all those are your asset they look at your asset they look at your liability so they will create a net worth the income verified by notice of assessment is a declared income and your asset and your liability there if you have a more asset and less liability you will have a, a, a net that asset will be your leverage they will be using to make sure that you are a, a prudent, a good investor or a good borrower. So then they look at your credibility. This is very important. And, and, and each time when you apply for a mortgage or a loan, the credit bureau is pulled that tell the history about it. So do not hide any information from your mortgage lender or a bank because they will be pulling out a minimum two reports one is transunion rbc uses transunion whereas other bank uses equifax it will show you each time you have borrowed money even rogers your wireless guy if you don't pay your bill they report it every month you see it so therefore they look at your credibility if you you have paid your bill right you don't have delay your payment so that goes in favor at the end of the day they look at this your income they call to tds total debt service total debt service includes all the loans the taxes and business visa cards and student loans it should not exceed 40 or 42 percent then it's called GDS gross debt service. That means it's only include everything, but not taxes. Your student loans are not included GDS. GDS should be 30, not more than 32%. Once you have these GDS and TDS calculated, you will know how much you qualify. And the, this is what the bank do. You can go to city-pro.net and buying or selling use the calculator you can do the calculation yourself and you can see how much you can afford what how much you qualify you can have very simple the process you can check it out and and instead of sharing all your private information is very very good to go to your website go to our website cdpro-net net go to the buying process or selling click on the calculators and you can estimate how much going to cost you? How much you can afford? What will be your mortgage and amortization schedule? And also land transfer fee because if you are buying in, in Mississauga, right now there's only one Ontario land transfer tax. But if you buy in Toronto, they are going to be a municipal land transfer tax because Toronto has a special legislation power given by Ontario government to a, impose a second land transfer tax. As I mentioned in may, many other program, that, uh, that all municipalities are facing infrastructure deficit. They need to borrow money. They are not able to generate enough money, and they need money from federal government, Ontario government, and and, and therefore, in order for them to to, um, to 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 take care of the maintenance of the bridges and roads. They are seeking more and more, uh, you know, uh, money. And they are asking, their all mayors are getting their head together to go out to Ontario government to give them special power, just like in Toronto, so they can raise funds to support infrastructure. So you're going to have this challenge coming to you very soon. So now go back and look at that again you have to realize that shortage of supply of housing is a big challenge at this moment you're going to continue to face this situation and there is no way 
that you are able to avoid that if you need to make a move to buy a property or you're going to um, move around uh, from a big city to a smaller city you have no choice but to do it because the prediction of canadian real estate situation is in ontario they're going to be increased over 11 percent in price average price in ontario so you are facing a multiple bidding war multiple offers bidding war is when you have competing offers coming from various uh, brokers multiple representation is when the brokerage that is listed the property also have a buyer there's a multiple representation there so there is a, a protocol and we have very good system in ontario where uh, real estate council of ontario monitors that and implemented a guidelines how to deal with the multiple offers and bidding war so there is a very transparent uh, system there the only thing you you control is your pen and your money when you wet your signature on an offer with the amount that you're going to offer you are going to live by it lots of people are de giving deposits because they went in hype to get a, a, a secure a deal and they created legal liability for um, for for them because in case seller is not able to sell the price and they can sue you because you made a commitment and but you did not give a deposit there is a shortage of housing so a lot of people are not doing that but there is a places where some sometimes this happen so be careful when you are bidding on 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 offer prepare your budget stay within your uh, line guidelines and strategy that you are developed with your realtor to make sure you are not overboarding or getting emotional be logical and go according to your plan and negotiate the deal the best you can and also make sure the deposit that you are borrowing if you are borrowing from your parents that deposit becomes your liability unless that is gifted to you and you have to declare that uh, that to your uh, lender when you're getting a mortgage this is very very important for us for you to understand that when you borrow a money doesn't matter from which source that is your liability that will reduces the amount of the mortgage that you qualify if a money is given to you gift you have to declare it and you have to have an affidavit that this money is given to you and and this is a gift not a loan so you are watching realty coffee talk on it was a trainer my name is tahir ai qureshi i'm a broker record for city pro realty Inc. brokerage if you have any question regarding real estate please call my office 9057859923 or call me directly 4164513439 i'd be more than happy to help you now if you are watching and viewer of realty coffee talk we have a negotiated a very special package with uh, 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 awaz entertainment uh, miss jabeen will give you a special discount you can call 4167869809 and tell her that you are watching a, a realty coffee talk on awaz entertainment she will give you $500 special 30 second advertisement 10 times a day for 30 days if you mention to them that you are a viewer of realty coffee talk a special discount again available to you viewers of realty coffee talk you can call 1-888-786-9809 and ask for miss jabeen she'd be more than happy to to give you a discount thank you for watching uh, please be careful right now covid is still there uh, while well, keep the social distance wear your mask and avoid unnecessary gathering and uh, we shall get back to you we pray for the the doctors nurses our armed forces who are putting their life online to protect us may god bless you all may god bless canada see you next thursday at 7 p.m on awaz entertainment in canada around the world my name is tahir ai bye for now